Hello everyone. In this video, I will explain you what is an inverse kinematics problem. Moreover, I will explain you how to solve the inverse kinematics problem for the robotic system with two degrees of freedom that you can see over here. As always, I created a post that nicely summarizes everything that will be explained in this video. A link to this post is given in the description below this video. Okay, let us first motivate the problem and explain the importance of the inverse kinematics problem. So, over here, you can see a planar manipulator consisting of two degrees of freedom, theta 1 and theta 2. Over here, we have motors that are controlling these links. For simplicity, I will just assume that I'm sending some voltage V1 and V2 to these motors. Of course, in reality, you will have a pulse, mod pulse feed modulation signal that you will send. You will have some encoders over here, but that's not important for this discussion. Now. Here it's very important to keep in mind that when we control the robot, we are controlling basically the voltage or control signal sent to the motors. So we are directly controlling theta 1 and theta 2. We are controlling angles of our joints or of our segments. However, the control problem is usually expressed in the world or in the Cartesian coordinates. And our assignment is to move this point C or the tool center point from some initial condition to the final condition. And in this case, I have to follow a straight line. Now, since you are only controlling theta 1 and theta 2, you're not directly controlling the TCP, the tool center point, you need to, for a given final destination point, for given coordinates of the final destination points, let's say coordinates XA and YA, you need to find the corresponding angles of rotations, let's say theta 1a and theta 2a, that will bring my point C to this point. So you can think of situation where your robotic manipulator will be in this position. For example, I'm now exaggerating in order to illustrate you the basic principle. Here, in this particular example, my theta 2a will be this thing, and my theta 1a will be this thing over here. So, if I specify xa and ya in the Cartesian coordinates, the goal of the inverse kinematics problem is to find the corresponding joint angles. That is, given the external coordinates, these are the external coordinates, xa, ya, I need to find how I need to control my motors in the internal coordinates such that my manipulator ends at this position. That is, its TCP tool center point goes to the position A. And, roughly speaking, that's the inverse kinematics problem. In reality, you're not going to have only one point, you're going to have a bunch of points along this straight line that describes the trajectory of my point C. So you will first have to, in to interpolate this line and to find a bunch of points 
And for each of these points, you will need to solve the inverse kinematics problem. Okay, so let us go to our original picture. Here, I will assume that this is the final destination point, that is the C's in the final, in the final destination point, and for this position, basically, or for this pose, the inverse kinematics problem can be defined as follows. So, given the coordinates x and y of the end effector point, C, that is in the world coordinates, compute the angles theta 1 and theta 2. Now, obviously, in the statement of the inverse kinematics problem, it's assumed that the lengths of the segment are given. So, L1 and L2 are given. So, from basic trigonometry, we can express the position of the point C in the x and y world coordinates as follows. x is L1 cosine theta 1, so L1 cosine theta 1, plus L2 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2, right? So if you basically analyze this graph, I'm bringing now my epic pen, you will see something like this. So this part over here, from this triangle, is what? Is basically L1 cosinus theta 1. And this part over here, let me just draw a vertical line, is nothing less than the part over here. And the part over here is obviously L2 cosinus of theta 1 plus theta 2. And here I will just erase this since I don't want to destroy my nice picture. Okay, so we have that x is equal to this and y is equal to this. And from this equation, we basically need to find theta 1 and theta 2. From the mathematical point of view, this represents the system of two equations with two unknowns. Unknowns are theta 1 and theta 2. Knowns are x, L1, L2, y, L1, and L2. So, given any position, for example, position over here, I can define the system and I need to find theta 1 and theta 2. So, let us find theta 1 and theta 2. Now, if we square this equation and if we add to the square of the second equation, we obtain something like this. Right. Now, here you will see basically that this part over here can be simplified by using this formula. So, cosinus of some arbitrary angles a1 and a minus a2 is equal to cosinus a1 cosinus a2 plus sinus a1 sinus a2. Now, if we use this trigonometric function or trigonometric identity and we substitute over here, we will obtain this equation. Now, here you should be kept in mind that the cosinus is an even function. What does it mean? So, if this is your unit circle, Here, if this angle is theta, the cosinus is equal to this part over here. Let's just change the color. So this is the cosinus. Now, this cosinus is obviously equal to the cosinus of minus theta. So if this angle is here, minus theta, the cosinus stay the same. So cosinus of minus theta 2 is equal to cosinus of theta 2. Let us erase this and continue. Now, from this equation, obviously, we can express the cosinus theta 2, and everything that goes on the right-hand side is known. x squared plus y squared minus l1 squared minus l2 squared divided by 2 l1 l2. So this is perfectly known. Okay. Now the question is, how many solutions do we have over here? Do we have one solution, 
two solutions, three solutions, five solutions, hundred or infinite number of solutions. For example, let us assume that this side is equal to 0 0.5. Okay, so we know that basically if cosinus of an angle is equal to 0 0.5, then theta 2 will be equal to 60 degrees or minus 60 degrees. Well, I said something that's not correct. Why? Because we know from mathematical point of view that the solutions can be expressed as follows okay so we have actually an infinite number of solutions where this k is just an iterator it can be 0 1 2 until infinity. So we in practice, actually from a mathematical point of view, we have an infinite number of solutions. However, there are only two solutions that are physically achievable. These solutions are 60 degrees and minus 60 degrees. Now, by doing this simple example, I illustrated you the first difficulty with the inverse kinematics problem. So the first issue with the inverse kinematics problem is that you have many solutions. It's not uniquely solved. You cannot uniquely solve it. Maybe some special cases, yes. So what happens in practice? Well, we can reach this point over here in two possible ways. The first way, obviously, is this way, right? And the second way is illustrated over here. So this, this is the second way for reaching this point. In the first case, theta 2 will be positive, And in the second case, it will be negative. Because we always measure theta 2 starting from the direction of the previous link. That's the convention. And obviously, the solution of theta 2 will influence the solution of theta 1. And you will see that later. Now, to summarize, this equation gives us theta 2. So, for any value of x and y, L1, L2, L1, and L2, that is physically achievable, we can find theta 2. And we know that the solution is not unique. Okay, so let us find now theta 1. So, how to find the theta 1? To find theta 1, we need to define two additional angles. We define this angle beta and we define this angle alpha. So, theta 1 will be beta minus alpha. And we will use the tangents, tangents of theta 1. So, tangents of theta 1 is equal to tangents of beta minus alpha. And we can express tangents of beta minus alpha using this trigonometric identity. So, we can say tangents of beta minus alpha is tangents beta minus tangents alpha. 1 plus tangents beta tangents alpha. And we know that tangents beta is y over x. So looking from this triangle, here's the angle beta. Here are the values, right? This will be the y coordinate and this will be the x coordinate. So tangents beta from this triangle over here. Okay, let me erase this. So from the triangle that you can see over here, we can find basically that tangents beta is y over x. Okay, so we know that, that that's correct. Now, let's see what is tangents alpha equal to. Now, looking again, tangents alpha from this triangle, the triangle that you can see over here, is equal to this side over this side. So this side is CM and the other side is OM. So we have CM over OM. Obviously from this triangle over here, or let me use another color to better explain you. So from this triangle that you can see over here,
what do we see? We see the following. We see basically that tangens theta 2 is this over this, or we can express sinuses with cosinuses, and we can express, for example, CM as what? There are many ways to do that. You can use tangents or cosine or cotangents or different trigonometric functions. However, here we will we'll see that CM is L2 sinus theta 2. So it's L2 sinus theta 2. That's the edge. And the other side of our triangle, this side over here, basically this side over here is equal to this part. So this part plus this part. So this part over here is nothing less than L1 and another part is what? L2 cosine theta 2. So using this and by basically substituting the values of cosine theta 2 and manipulating this equation, we can obtain the tangens theta 1, actually, or actually let me be more precise. So here we expressed tangens alpha, and we can use basically this tangens alpha in this equation over here, and we can substitute tangens beta in this equation, and we have already uh, found the values of theta 2. We express the theta 2 by basically using this equation over here, actually the equation over here, by substituting these values in this equation, we can basically obtain our final result. So our final result is that tangents theta 1 is given by this expression over here. Theta 2, again, we can find from this equation. And this gives us our solution. Now, obviously, since we have two solutions for theta 2, right, we might have two solutions for theta 1. Why? Because sinus is not an even function. Sinus is an odd function. That is, if this is a minus, for example, theta 2, here the signs will be changed and the whole expression will be changed. So we will have two solutions also for theta 1. And you can clearly see that from the graph over here. Okay, this will be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I make, please subscribe or support my channel. Thank you very much and have a nice day.